I feel like I'm like leaning forward. I feel like it's just that good posture. I feel like mine's actually leaning forward. Instead of ping the disco. <laughs> We're live, boys. Oh my god, I'm, I'm still pinging this. We're live? We're live. Let's go. We're live. What's up? Welcome, everybody, to our first pre show show for the PBA League. As you can see, we're back on sets. Yes, we are. Which we love, which love, we love so much. Uh, a lot to talk about, really, because this is the first time we have a home team, not Portland Lumberjacks. Yeah, yeah, this is the first time we're uh, since we've kind of gone worldwide that uh, we have a, a hometown team. So uh, Las Vegas, uh, we're here in beautiful Las Vegas. Not really so beautiful today. It's rainy. a little rainy yeah, today. A little rainy. Didn't know it rain crazy, here. But uh, yeah, we're here at Suncoast. Um, the Masters TV show will be taking place tomorrow, but today we are all uh, focused on the PBA Elite League, where the uh, Las Vegas uh, will be taking on the Waco Wonder, but that will be our second match. Yes, it that will. That will be our second match. Our first match will be the New Jersey Kingpins taking on the Go Bowling Dallas Strikers. Um, yes, so do we, we want to get right into that little first match? Uh, let's we get got into anything that. else we want to talk about? Or? Yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, we'll, we can talk we'll about just, that stuff later. We'll get into the first match mm. and things like that. Um, yeah. yeah, first match. I think this is the most important match, I feel like. This is a big one. Because the Waco match, like Waco is pretty much mathematically out of the playoffs. So that match doesn't really affect the league that much. Like they could still get there, it but could. everything would have to go their yeah. way. It could it, it affects Vegas a bit more, but yeah. Yeah, well, with the bye. But I'm thinking more of just how the playoffs looks. If Dallas doesn't win today, they're almost mathematically eliminated too at that point. It, it would have be, to go a yeah, lot yeah. their way. It's, it's going to be very tough for them. Um, but we've seen like the, it can be very streaky. These matches, like they're two games, like they're best of two with a. You know, a, a three-person tiebreaker, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's. I feel like they're super easy to win and also super easy to lose. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you can get on those runs where, I mean, it's kind of just like the Masters, like we just bowled, right? To where it's like you can get happen to match up where your opponents just don't bowl very well, yeah. and you go for like you don't even have to bowl that great. Right. Or you can bowl really well. And kind of get stomped on, which Dallas has pretty much done all year. Yeah, they're like the second high average. Yeah, and so second yes. from the bottom. Yes. Yes. I want to lay it out for the fans. You got you have to realize how difficult these matches are. If you walk into these this team format Baker game, we throw two shots per game, but not only that, we get you know the second matches we get four shots of practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the captains have to decide who they want to put in. You really don't know who's super lined up, who's going to be comfortable on the pair and how they're gonna you know just there's so many different things so many variables so many moving parts that's what makes the league so difficult to win well and, yeah it's the best 50 60 guys in the world and you can anyone can throw a double on tour i mean that sounds easier said than done just because it doesn't really work that way when you're balling baker you think i'm just throwing two shots or whatever but still it, like waco could go on a run you don't know it's just like the league is it's hard to win yeah I mean, and and Another aspect of that tonight is now we're on TV. So yeah. now, now your second shot is considerably later than yeah. what it is, has been all year. Yeah. Where you're throwing that first shot, and then you have your break, and then there's a TV commercial, and then you have maybe you're the second bowler. And now you got another guy to, to go before you can go. Right. And it's very hard to get into a rhythm. So that second shot, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. No matter how good of a look that you have, it's a good and it could be 10 minutes of real time right every bit of 10 minutes of real time before you're throwing your next shot so uh to be able to pry one off it is uh, it's definitely challenging but tv is also another variable that we don't have to deal with in our regular matches so um as we all know the lights are a little brighter temperature might be a little hotter the lanes might change a little differently than what we're used to those are all factors that we got to think about when we're uh, playing out here on tv so yeah, yeah, but uh, like we said, uh, go bowling. Dallas Strikers—they had the third highest average in in the PBA league this year with two seventeen point seven eight. Um, yet their opponents have the highest average against them at two twenty six point eight nine, which is a it's ten pins higher than the uh, the second place's opponents. Average. So the, the next highest team that has an opponent average is 216, and they're averaging 226 against Dallas this year. So it's kind of crazy. Dallas, third highest average, and they're 2-7 and seven 
currently, and then we kind of flipped the script of the team that they're bowling. The uh, New Jersey Kingpins, they are 6-3 and three overall, and they're only averaging 207.94. So they have the sixth highest average in the league, and they have four more match wins than the team they're bowling tonight. So it's, it is pretty wild. It, it, it is good to wild. show. It, it's, it's time and place. You catch a guy, you catch a team on the right pair for your for your team, obviously, yeah. and you get a couple of wins no matter how high or low the scores are. And then sometimes you go know, like the strikers, they just they run in the bus shot every time. Like I know when we bowled then, we bowled a couple of two forties at them, mm-hmm. and that's and they're still bowling pretty good and just not winning games. And that's what we talked about earlier, right? Like it's very easy to win and very hard to win at the same time. Like Dallas bowling great, can't catch a break. Kingpins. Not saying they're not bowling well, but I mean they're ten pins a game less than than uh, Dallas, and they have four more match wins. So, yeah, you know it's all about trying to match up one. You know it, it could just be you're catching the wrong teams the wrong week on the wrong foil pattern, um, the wrong bowling center, like whatever it may be. It, it is very very challenging. But well, that's um, the thing too. The pattern they bowled on is from Delaware. Yep. We're now in a whole nother state, in a whole nother bowling alley. We had, we had three weeks off since Delaware. Um, got, you know, you gotta think too. Like when you're making a lineup, lineup and stuff, the guys that are bowling good, right? Like this week, does that change your lineup comparative? Where it's like, okay, uh, Cortez just got picked up to New Jersey, and he made a late, he made a big run in the match where he finished well, top ten or yeah, whatever he yeah, got to. Really well. Um, it's like, man, we gotta put a pretty bottom of the lineup. Like I mean, more like four or five area where it's like. There's so many moving parts of the league that makes it hard and easy where like some guys on um, maybe the Waco didn't bowl good this week, so then it's like it might be in the head. Like I didn't bowl good at the Masters, and now we gotta bowl a TV sh- like show. Yeah, and I think the one thing that may I, I don't want to say make it easier, but it's something that is gonna be a little more um, uh, playable from the obviously bowling in Delaware. We bowled on Billy Hardwick, forty four feet, and now this week we bowled on forty six feet. Yeah. So I believe, uh, I remember the U.S. Open show, we bowled on 38 feet, I think, the week before for the for the, uh, the TV or for the league. And then when we went bowled there, we bowled on four different patterns, yeah. and we bowled on a, a bunch of different things to where your, kind of, your angles are all over the place, right. to where I think it could translate a little bit better this week, um, just from, you know, obviously you're either bowling 15 games or you're bowling 15 games plus a match play. Um, and you're kind of have somewhat similar angles. You're not really I trying to, to be super open. So I think the guys that have been bowling well this week um, are still going to have that confidence, and it's not like they have to do something completely different. Yeah, so, I agree. you know, I, we could we could see, you know, we do have two, um, we have two roster changes throughout the entire league. We have two roster changes, and both teams are going to be on the, on the show tonight. So in that, that first match, we're going to see uh, Cortez Shank on the New Jersey Kingpins, um, and then the second match, uh, we're going to see Zach Lopez, uh, part of you know, the Waco Wonder. They yeah. they dropped uh, the reigning league MVP Ryan Simonelli, and uh, Which is crazy to see and, that. and Kyle Sherman has been dropped from the New Jersey Kingpins. So. Yeah, it's funny. Those are the only two teams that made any uh, changes yeah. to the team, and they're bowling and they're both the first play. matches back yeah. on TV. So uh, that'll be interesting to see. I, I mean, to not to downplay what Cortez did this week, and you know he got picked up before this week happened, and the bowler that he is. But that was a pretty blindsided pick, in my opinion. I was shocked by that because you look at the guys that were eligible that could be picked up from a team. He would not be at the top of that list. Again, just going off of like where he's at in points and stuff like that, you know, like a book pool just won and he won on TV and then he doesn't get picked up. It was a weird pick for me, but we talked with Chris Barnes a little bit about, about why. And he said he really likes Cortez because he can play any shape that you need him to play. Where he feels like some guys that are having a good year, it's because he's, they've just kind of matched up to their A game, like a Zach and a book. They like to slow wheel it, and that's kind of what they've been able to do all week. They're bowling amazing nonetheless. But he said, Cortez, I know he can throw it at five. I know he can throw it from 25. He can roll it. He can spin it. He can throw it hard and slow. He said, that's what you need whenever it comes to the team stuff. If you need one shot, yeah. you got to do something on the fly. He likes that. So, and I mean, what a good call right after he gets drafted or picked yeah. up and popped off this week. Yeah. A, a great call as he shot 300 to knock him. 
Chris Barnes out of the Masters. <laughs> and, and Chris Barnes texted his group chat and said, I vote him off the team <laughs> after he was the one that vouched for him. So yeah. that's funny, just a little play on Baron Tron here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I do have two things. So we, we talk about trends all the time on tour, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, could play a factor in why guys may get picked, may not get picked. Um, but like you mentioned, the two guys, Zach Wilkins and Boog, you know, maybe they're just seeing the picture the right way and week in and week out. Even though we're bowling on different distances, it kind of turns into more or less the same thing at some point. So the guys that have figured that out this year, those are the guys that are bowling really well. Um, point number two uh, goes back to the Cortez pick outside of the whole Barnes deal because he wasn't a New Jersey Kingpin last year. Um, I was, and when we were drafting guys and it came down to the last pick, Cortez was actually in the conversation. Yeah. So... It's not like it was a, a super blindsided pick from, from insider info with that team. Um, but I just want to put it out there that he, we did have eyes on him when I was on the team. Well, and, and Carolyn's been known to not necessarily, necessarily take the quote-unquote best available, right? To where, like, everyone thought the obvious choice was Book. Like, everyone thought Book's going to get picked up to a team. You know, he's bowling incredible right now. He just won on TV. Like, somebody's going to pick him up. Uh, but Carolyn's kind of always been the one that it's like team chemistry is way above and, talent. And we're seeing it and now. And we're seeing it. And I, think, and I think we're seeing the same thing with this Vegas team as well. And obviously a very talented team. But just in, in years past as well, they've always been super like together as a team. Like I feel like their personalities match up super well together to where like when they start striking – just like everyone gets like extra locked in, super focused, and they string them. They string them together. So they're very, very like minded players. Yeah, they're just like minded players. They kind of see the, the lanes the same way. They're, you know, even they got they got higher rep players like AJ on the team. Um, then you kind of got the middle of the pack uh, to lower guys with uh, Thomas Larson, Sean Rash, Andrew Anderson. But they still kind of see the lane the same way. And then obviously you got Russo on the other side of the lane. So. Um, so yeah. to touch up on that, because I put up a banter, uh, or banner, not banter. Um, <laughs> a banner for banter. Yeah, exactly. How important is team chemistry in the league? Because you look at some teams on paper, I would say our team is one of the best teams on paper, like an EJ Simons team, one of the best teams on paper. But that just doesn't correlate to how it meshes whenever you're bowling. Well, I think team chemistry is way more important than what we got. The number one, the number 10, the number 11 guy in the world from last year. Yeah, it's, it, it's one of those things that's like you obviously want to take your chances, right? If you're going to have the, the best players in the world that need to throw two shots a game, it's like, well, yeah, why wouldn't well, I everyone have can do Yeah, it. why wouldn't I have them on the team? But then again, you think it's only two shots a game, and everyone out here, this is what they do for a living. So if, if, if they're not able to make two shots on, you know, on, in a game you know, to, to be on the team, then – Probably shouldn't be out here in the first well, place, bowling on tour. Let's think so. about some MVPs, though. Like, who were the MVPs over the past few years? We had Sim last year. Who was the MVP before that? Like, Not even sure. Kyle? I know. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle. I mean, Kyle he's, he's West. Kyle or West. I think it was one Kyle. of the two. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's been a, a lumberjack for. I, several I feel like years it's not now. necessarily it's always the individual player that's been at the top of the game. The it's the guy MVP. that's gonna keep you in it. It's like uh, you look at like my best. Like comparison, it's like Pat Bev. A lot of people might not like Pat Bev, but you like him on your team. You want those guys that are there. Yeah. I think the biggest thing of the PBA league of why teams are going to get them while they aren't is guys fully like committing and understanding. Like, I'm here to win. If I need to be benched, if I need to be in the two yeah. hole, like you got to fully invest into like I'm here for the team, whatever that looks like. And also, I think guys, and I, I, I say this as a part to our team. I think guys put too much pressure on themselves when they get up there and they have to throw their one or two shots because it's like, I got one shot to make a statement. Well, you just need to yeah. throw a strike. And I think there's times where we want it a little bit too much. We get up in the eighth and we can take the lead, and then I throw a bad shot. And I'm like, I really wanted that one. Like, yeah. you just got to let the bowling happen and just trust the process of it. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It is very, very tough. But, um, yeah, Las Vegas, uh, they have the second highest average um, this year with 218.22. Just a couple ticks behind uh, the Portland team that we were just talking about. They're bowling good. Uh, but this was a pretty high-scoring pattern uh, for the league matches when we were in Delaware. So uh, we could kind of see them take back over the, the number one uh, spot with average just by a couple of good games here on TV tonight. Um, and then, obviously, take it on the Waco Wonder. One and eight. Can't get anything but a new look of a team. all year. 
averaging yeah, averaging 204. But like I said, want to know on TV? They are want to know on TV. Yeah, TV. They, the only time they've won was in Indy uh, during the U.S. Open. Um, yeah. So yeah, added Zach Wilkins. Um, I know we talked to a couple of teammates. Uh, obviously, Mitch, you know, we've been um, rooming with, and he said that they all want Zach to bowl pit. So um, he didn't want it. And Zach he said he doesn't really want, want it. it. So yeah, well, it'll be an interesting dynamic to see how that lineup plays out. Uh, but DJ Archer said the same thing. They they want to see Zach fit. I mean, he's born incredible. Um, yeah, he's highest in points on yeah, that team now. It, but it's one of those things like if you guys were not on a team all year, you guys get picked up for a team, and they're all like, "Yo, we want you fit." Like, it's kind of that weird like. It's a little overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's yeah. like that same thing like you guys were just talking about. You I'm, want I'm, it, you want it so bad. I'm gonna play a little devil's advocate bad. here though. I feel like if I were in that position at least, and the guys are looking at me and I'm bowling really well, and they're like, "Hey, we want you in this spot," I'm like. Yeah, yeah, let's you know, go. My teammates believe in me. All right, let's I think, get it. Yeah, yeah. I want to do this. I want this for the that's team. A, I want this for myself. When that's a team you want to be a part of. Right, oh, exactly. Like, yeah, you always want to be on a team that, that believes in each and every moving part. So yeah. I think that's what makes a great team great. So yeah, maybe yeah. Waco can uh, turn around here with uh, some, some newfound talent on this team. Yeah, and I think it's it's definitely a, a something that had to be done with that team. I mean, they're, they were one in eight. Um, just couldn't really ever get anything going, you know. They, I mean, it's basically a last ditch effort, right? I mean, they have to win out to, to have a chance. The best they can be is six and eight, and it's looking like six wins is probably going to be enough to get to get you into the um, at least you know six seed. Yeah, that would be and, like 50, 50, Do we have fourteen? Yeah, it would be six and eight. Six and eight would be the best that they could be. Which so, makes sense because we um, take six out of eight teams. Yeah, so seven. So as of right now, pretty much seven wins is uh, almost a guarantee. Uh, Vegas is uh, already clinched their spot because they have seven wins, but they also have the tiebreaker against Dallas. So even if da- Dallas does get to seven wins, um, they'll, they'll still have uh, the tiebreaker on them. So they are for sure in the playoffs, but... Um, you know, we were talking to Sean Rash before uh, we came on air, and he's not content with just being in the uh, in the in the league, uh, the playoffs. He wants he wants a bot. Uh, yeah, I mean it's you. I think that's everyone. You everyone always want to buy. Yeah, so, I mean you're, that's guaranteeing you into the top four. Yeah. Less you basically got to win. You get, basically got to win two matches. Future yeah. Hall of Famer, he's got the mindset. Always wants more. Trying to win. Trying to get as much as he can. Yeah. So it only makes sense for uh, Sean Rash to want something that something like that for his team. So now. Obviously, this team is going incredibly well. First team that's going to be the hometown team on a TV show. A team that is, uh, I want to say, fueled by passion. Super energetic. Uh, well, minus Thomas Larson. Super yeah. like, passionate. Super. Like a big uh, momentum very team. Very big momentum team. Very big emotional team. Is it too much tonight? Or do we see him? just absolutely dominate and bowl a couple two fifties. I, I can see it going both ways. I, I think those guys, like the guys on that team, like the Andrews and the Russos, like the, they do really live for the moments. You can just tell when they're bowling. Like as a team, we've seen them like outside, on toy and off toy, like on action matches. Andrew loves those moments. So I can see that feeling them and they just come out here and they just get it done easy. I could also see them wanting it a little bit too much. I yeah. think that's very common in the league where guys just get little overhyped because we don't get to do this all the time we don't get to bowl for a team hardly ever we're doing it on tv it's two shots you want to get loud you have a home team behind you now so you get up there and you're, you're thinking like what am i going to celebrate how am i going to celebrate yeah. like you you do that you get up there and you're like all right if i strike here i'm going to do and then you throw a shot and you're like that has no chance at all a little too ahead of sometimes. exactly yeah. and i know a lot of guys do that i know for a fact that like aj johnson does that pretty often he knows what he's thinking about before he's well, it's throwing bad, shot. It's like right we're bowling on a long pattern again so ball speed comes into play to where it's like you're a little juiced up. You throw just a tick fast, and it can two pin, get two ten, can two eight ten, or three seven nine, like you know for the for the lefty. So um, that could come into play, but at the same time, it also wasn't the most difficult pattern that we bowled on this year. Speak for yourself, brother. It wasn't. And, and this. I was uh, in last after the first tournament. Oh wait, Delaware. I made the yeah, cut there. <laughs> that was the 
Easiest pattern <laughs> ever. <laughs> the whole team will get that way. But, and there's a little bit more friction. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of friction in Delaware, too. But there's but, some friction here to where maybe it's it not could be as, a topography. Maybe it's not as easy to 210. Or it could be a lot harder here with topography. The, the, Who knows? The pattern could be a lot harder. And it could be a 210 could be a good Baker game. So, um, yeah, we just it, it's hard to tell because we haven't seen this pattern in this building. Um but yeah, it, it, I think I think we're either going to see an absolute strike fest from Vegas, or we could see some errant shots at some crucial times from there. I, and, I'm, I'm, and, and, I'm sorry, to cut you off, but and we're and they're pulling the Waco team who's got nothing to lose. Yeah, they're they going to enjoy their it's, last it's a, time on TV. But it's literally like if they if they lose. That's what I'm saying. That's what he put it that way. I know well, that sounded I mean, bad. It, if they lose, they're done. Like for yeah. sure, they're yeah. officially locked out. Yep. So they literally have to win. So they're going to come out and like they have to make the aggressive moves. They have to make the aggressive decisions to be able to, to have a chance. Like they got nothing to lose. If they lose, hey, we went down swinging. Yeah. They're not going to play it safe. So it's the same thing. You could also see 150 from them, or you could see a couple of bombs from them. Has Vegas bowled on TV? No, Vegas is this not. This is their on first TV. time bowled yeah. on TV. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. bowl again later in the year. I am um, on the Vegas train, partially because I'm a local, but um, I just like their team as a whole. They got the veteran presence see. with Rash. Um, also, they're they're headed by Alonzo Montelli, all the experience in the world, international, fantastic player, Hall of Famer. Um, but I feel like watching all of these guys perform on TV individually, they're all very good. They're just they like the yeah. moment. They work well together. I just don't if they play their cards right. I like their chances. Here's the thing. When we bowl our league matches, we're all bowling side by side, and we've bowled against everyone at this point. You can tell what teams, like, naturally mesh. Like, you can just tell. And Vegas is one of them. You can just tell when they bowl, win or lose. Like, they're all in it in the same amount of way, and, like, they have that chemistry and stuff. Um, I think chemistry is just going to beat the better teams or the worst teams on paper. I think when you look at the league, you look at, like, how the teams work together more than who's on that team in the sense of, like, talent-wise. Yeah. If I look at a team and I'm like, I like this team to win, it's because I can tell, like, how the guys interact with each other and stuff. Like, when we're voting against you guys, I can tell how you guys interact with each other. Like, you're always joking and laughing, and, like, you're, it seems like you're genuinely having a good time. Yeah. That goes a long ways in the league because we can all throw a couple strikes in a game. I mean, we can all do it, you know. Yeah. Easier said than done. It is. But, yeah. Nonetheless, when you get down to it, it's more than just throwing shots. So yeah, I, I don't want to throw Motown under the bus or be biased in any kind of way, but I feel like they're the perfect example. They have yeah, a ton of su- success in the league, and they have two of the top three players on our tour right now. Yeah, well, one and two in points last year, and it's like they're just like oh, they're just all right, you know, because yeah. that chemistry comes into play. Obviously, they can strike with any team. So with all that being said, I'm taking Waco tonight. Taking Waco? I'm taking Waco because... Keep the dream alive? Here's the thing is, like you said, they got nothing to lose at this point, and they're just going to go bowl. They have a little bit different team with just Zach, but, like, it, it, you might even one guy might make that big of a difference. I agree, 100%. Um, they bowled on TV once. I know that doesn't change a huge amount, but I just, like, I don't know. I just know that any team can win, and I wouldn't be surprised if they win. So I'm going to give them the underdog yeah, win. And I think it's one of those, like, they've, they've had the TV experience, like we were talking about earlier. It's a long break in between shots. Like, it's normally a long break between shots, but right. it's usually a few minutes. Now, like, it could easily be 10 minutes by the time you throw your next yeah. shot. I'm going to throw this curveball. Waco does have the older players. I was so, gonna ask that. I do we think that well, that do we think the break hurts them more? I mean, just, how bad does the how bad does I don't know. Like it doesn't bother me, think, right? The break has never bothered me. Every telecast I've made, it it doesn't. Like I don't know you if gotta, it's because I think it's it's at least double that. Right, and and that will change. But I'm thinking like, how much does it really hurt the older guys that they got to sit for ten minutes? Like they make jokes about it. Like it doesn't really. I, like, I think it has yeah. seemed like it would have it to. to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but um, just. We're just going off of, because um, obviously these are now where you're in the quote unquote second round of uh, matches throughout the year. So now we're all bowling the same teams we've already bowled. Um, so New Jersey did beat Dallas in round four, so the second week, um, 2 0. So they swept them. And then Vegas beat Waco in round three, so also the second week, um, 2 to 1. So they actually so beat, them, so they beat them in a roll off. So, um, we can we'll have to see. So second week was uh, that would have been the U.S. Open, right? No, the U.S. Open was only a TV show, so they had would have been in 
um, Illinois, right? Yeah. Illinois. So um, a little bit of a higher scoring one. Again, we're going to see a little bit of a higher scoring one as well to where, you know, then if it comes down to, you know, three shots, literally anything can happen. Um, I, I, could, I could absolutely see Waco win. I just, I don't know why. Yeah, it's just I like mean, one of those, like, gut feelings. Like, I don't like, obvious, I don't like your gut feeling ob- right now. The obvious cause... pick is Vegas, yes. yes but is, why would I just obvious. say that as and it be LA, boring as to talk the LA about? As X-Men, as members of the LA X-Men. The X-Men, yes. <laughs> we, we need them to lose. We do need them I'm to lose. We do need them to lose, but we're, we are now uh, on the journalist side of our lives. <laughs> so we we're, can't bring we're in. We're biased. <laughs> so I mean, we can't bring in. It's content, so I'm bringing everything I got. We can't bring Guns it in. Blazing. I mean, obviously, yeah. So uh, for the people out there that are just tuning in, um, I have not told us exactly when or what channel we're going to be on. We got told that there is a rain delay in a baseball game that's going on right now on FS1. If that game goes on time, we will start on time. So they're going to let us know. By the end of the show, we'll tell you guys exactly when it's going to be live. But hopefully it'll be about 10, 15 minutes late of 7 p.m. Eastern, right? Yeah, yeah. they said um, if the game is going to end – Within 10, uh, 15 within minutes. 10, within 15 minutes of the scheduled start time, we are actually just going to stop the show. And we, wait. Will, we will wait. We will start. And go live. Uh, go live on FS1 at about 7.15. 7. Yeah. Uh, so you guys won't miss any of the show. Yeah. Uh, but if, if that baseball game is projected to go over the 15-minute time frame, we will start on time at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Business. And then once that... Um, once that baseball game is over, then the, the TV show will uh, transfer to FS1. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys know when it's yeah. close to the time yeah, exactly what they tell us. That's all we got for you. Um, also, if you're currently in Las Vegas, whether you live here or you're in town for the Open Championships, come to Suncoast. There are plenty got, of seats back here. You got an hour and a half. Yeah, come see us. Come say hi. Yeah. Get some autographs from the league guys. These are the most Don't ask fun us, telecasts. These are, the, these are the most fun telecasts to come to. They're an atmosphere like we don't ever see whenever it's the singles events. Everyone's getting loud every shot. There's a lot more going on here. So if you're here, come out and support. If you're not here, support by watching it on yep. hopefully if it's one at the time it's supposed to be on. Again, we'll let you guys know soon. Um, so to wrap up the first match, I'm taking Waco. Just because. Oh, the second match. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Dallas match is going to be first. That's right. Um, so but we've been Dallas, talking Dallas about Waco. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking about them. Uh, but yeah, that's the second match. I'm well, taking Vegas, hometown fan. Well, we're, we, well, yeah, I'm taking I mean, Waco. Yeah, I'm taking Waco because I just think it'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the obvious choice is Vegas. Like, yeah, it is. I'm yeah. Team LAX all the way. But it's, so I'm, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to one watch. I I will predict it will go to a roll off. A I'm roll gonna, off. I'm gonna take Vegas in a roll off. What's the final score in the roll off? Because the the roll off goes for the people that don't know. It's three guys throw three shots. Whatever you yeah. knock it down, it's on that TV screen. <laughs> yeah. If I get a strike, it's ten. If Darren gets five, it's five. If Chris hey. gets seven, it's seven. Do the math there. Twenty-two. <laughs> Twenty-two. Uh, that that's would, not that, gonna that's, win. That's gonna lose. And that's uh, off. That's not how we would do it. I would 20. not strike. It would be like he would strike. I would get five. Yeah. But, so I would say twenty-nine to twenty-seven. Vegas wins in a roll. Do you think the 27's like one guy throws a bad shot? Yeah, in three, in three six tens, yep. two strikes. That was me. <laughs> Except we won thirty-seven to thirty-six. There you go. My God. Yeah, he got me. He yeah got so me. if there if there is a tie after the uh, three uh, three balls, then you uh, go on to, go to the, the next guy. The next next guy. So it will be um, a fourth member of your team. If they tie again, it will be the fifth member of your team. So you cannot repeat until you go through all of your players, and then you will start repeating again. So um, I will take Las Vegas with uh, 500 for their two games and yeah. no roll. Yeah, you're expecting a bomb. Bombs. I very easily I'm could saying, see that as happening. We're going all the way. All right. it, it, this is like it. One of the hardest things to predict is going to be the league matches, just because it's like I said, it's two shots per player. You can shoot 250. You can shoot 150. Right. Like it, it, it can go either way really quickly. And I think we saw that on the, the TV show at the U.S. Open as well, where it just, like, it, it was a mess. Yeah. It, it got messy really quickly. Um, and But we'll see. I mean, I feel like guys might be a, a touch sharper right now. 
with the same angles, right? Yeah. We, like, I agree yeah, with we, that. they just pulled the U.S. Open, but like I said, your angles are kind of everywhere. And um, now angles have been similar all week. They were, they were tricky this week. Uh, there were some big scores, but there were also some really low scores. So they were tricky this week, so you had to be pretty sharp. Um, and they're going to be able to play the same angles, so we'll see. So Let's talk about this Kingpins and Strikers yeah. match. Yeah. I'm interested to see this one as well. Another team. This is the big one. In my another opinion. team. This is the more important one, I, I would think, in the overall picture of uh, the league itself. This is the more important one. Um, the Kingpins six and three, uh, with the win, they will pretty much secure a spot into the playoffs. I, I gotta let me see if the uh, the tiebreaker. Yes. So if they win, they're in the playoffs for sure because they will have a tiebreaker. Uh, win. Um, so that's that's basically a win and you're in type of deal. And then you have the Dallas. If you lose, not necessarily out of it, but you are back is up against the wall for sure. Yeah, they'd have to pretty much win out, and they would need and need help. They would need help from us or Motown. I think yeah. Motown's actually pretty close to that. Motown. Same. Motown's five and five, so they are going to be kind of in that realm as well. Um, Oh, yeah, we'll see if we can get that. Hold on one second. Mike J's got us. He's going to take it down a little bit. Thank you. Appreciate that. Guys, I see uh, in the comments that we've had some audio difficulties. Uh, the stream's just running a little slow. I don't know if there's much I can do about that. The signal uh, in this building it's, is... The signal is non-existent, so... I can't believe that it's doing as well as it so does. we're doing the best we can sorry usually the stream it sounds a lot better so we're just working with what we got so just bear with us and listen to our muffled voice that's all we got <laughs> guys all right, right now. So let's make our picks as an la x-mate i gotta go with new york i got gotta not gotta new jersey need to. Need to. <laughs> new jersey i'm need sorry it. It was New, New York, York when I was. I know you were New York Kingpin for a while. Yeah, it's New, Jersey. New Jersey now. Yes, it's a completely different team. The, yeah, the uh, the Ballards, the Fighting so Ballards. So I'm not gonna answer as biased to what we need because uh, we do need Dallas to lose so that way we don't have to like you know, really earn that. I say earn that spot. We don't need like have to win out. You know, we would like to be in the playoffs without having to make it happen. So, um, but Dallas is bowling too good. Their team is too good. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of guys that mesh well together because there are a lot of the boys um i i like i could see it to where they finally figure out how to win because yeah. i'm just waiting for them to like make the run i want to yes. put it out there they were like the house before the house yeah they yeah. were yeah. They, they were they were, they were the boys, the boys. Yeah. and it's one of those things where it's like you got jake peters bowled really well this week you got tommy who also made the cut yeah also made the cut lost a couple matches but bowled well you got uh bill who didn't make a cut? Player of the year, player of the year runner. candidate. Who I kind of want to yes. touch on. Right. So player of the year candidate, player of the year favorite. Right. As, as, of, as of the current moment, say so. it's still still got to be Bill. I would say as the player of the year favorite. But a look at his league stats. Not like they don't jump off the paper whatsoever. Right. Fifty three. I want to say fifty three percent strike percentage. I have it written down here. Uh, nope. I didn't write it down. Never mind. Um, but I, I, he was in like the 50, 53, I want to say, is the strike percentage in the league. Um, and I wanted to mention that solely because most of our matches are bowled directly after our practice sessions, right? So, like, obviously, the best bowlers in the world are going to make adjustments. As the week goes on, you're going to make adjustments. You're going to figure the lanes out. You're going to start bowling a little bit better, right? There's some weeks, obviously, you just never figure it out. But there's the weeks where, like, he's the best player in the world. He's bowling really well. So if he figures it out, he's making the shots that he needs to make. So it can get a little bit skewed um, with how well you're bowling in the league versus how well you're bowling on the tour, right? We see Andrew Anderson in the other match, 75% strike percentage That's in the league. League MVP probably. Uh, has to be the, the favorite for the league MVP right yep. now. So, and I, I don't want to say a bad year on tour, but you know, for a former player of the year, it's definitely not up to his standard for a year on tour. So you're kind of seeing the opposite, right? Like he's seeing it really well at the beginning of the week, maybe making some wrong guesses or something towards the end of the week. And then you got Bill who's maybe not seeing it so great at the beginning of the week and then making the correct guesses as it, as it goes on. So um, 
just then that's a, a whole another dynamic to what the, the league brings to as well. But also the dynamic of this Dallas team too is they're down a guy. We haven't really touched on it, but yeah. Jacob Hudson is not bowling this week. Um, didn't bowl the Masters. Didn't bowl the Masters. He's not bowling this week um, for reasons we are unsure of. Uh, hopefully everything's okay, but um, that that does make a difference because now your mindset it's like we don't have that guy that might we can sit because we have five guys that have good ball reaction. The five guys that are here. They got that's a bowl, and yeah. I don't know if that if that's gonna hurt them that bad, but it's gonna change your mindset a little bit. To like, man, like we're, we're missing a guy, like it's just the five of us. It, it might make a little bit of a difference, or maybe it doesn't. Yeah, but yeah. I can see it. I mean, and, Jake, and, and Jacob's that guy that kind of that uh, I want to say that like goofy kind of like yeah. happier go lucky kind of guy to where like he can bring the energy up in a team for sure. Um, so that's it's not like you're just missing a, a really good bowler. You're missing a really good bowler that also provides some some chemistry, uh, which the team isn't lacking anyway. So yeah. it's it's not like it's uh, they're bowling good. I mean, you see the yeah. averages; they're just not winning. They're, they're, I do want to say though, as a player, but for, out of anybody, if he's striking, he's lined up seeing it right. He's one of the guys you want on your He'll team. Never every miss. Season. He'll never miss. He'll never miss. I I've had experience bowling with him. I'm like I've never been so confident in my life that a teammate was going to first strike. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you know, bowling on Team USA. Yeah, I've got to bowl a doubles tournaments with him, and I'm just like, thank God. Yeah, I finally once get, it starts to, like, yeah, I finally get to cheer for this guy. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. I finally get to clap when his ball strikes. The eight, uh, eight to nine times a game. It's funny you say that because the dynamic of we bowl all each other week in and week out. We're also friends and stuff. When we get to bowl the league. It's like, man, this this does feel cool. I can just watch it almost strike for me. It's like, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he does, it's like, huh? Yeah, exactly. So you just expect it to happen every time. Exactly. So you, you're getting that hit for me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we are getting some notes handed to us here. Kev, go ahead. <laughs> All right. There's a lot of notes here, guys. A lot going on. You got going it. You can read it. You want me to read it? You can read it. Anyways, yeah, I got New York here winning in a roll out. 20. Now let's go 30 to 29. I want to see three strikes. Ooh. From the from the Kingpins, New Jersey. I'm sorry. All right, Chris, go ahead and let us know. We figured, we uh, found out what we're doing with the live, the live. Sorry, the telecast. Yeah, so it's uh, basically the same thing we talked about earlier. But if you guys weren't here, um, the Braves and Phillies game had a rain delay, so they started like 30 minutes late. Um, so depending on how that game transpires, how long it goes, uh, basically if the game is going to end by seven. 15 or earlier uh, Eastern time, uh, we are just going to go ahead and hold off for the league and we will start at 7.15 uh, on FS1 with the first match. You won't miss anything. Um, if it's predicted to be uh, ending at 7.16 or later, uh, we are going to go ahead with the league. Um, we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to start on Fox Business or FS2. That is yet to be decided by Fox. So it's either going to be Fox Business or FS2. And then once the baseball game is complete, uh, we will go to FS1 and pick up wherever we happen to be on in the match. So um, Fox Sports app. Go ahead and download the Fox Sports app. You will be able to watch the league no matter what. If it's on Fox Business, if it's on FS2, if it's on FS1, whatever. If you have the Fox Sports app, go ahead, download that, and uh, you will be able to uh, go ahead and watch it if you have a valid cable subscription. It so, has been very clutch yeah. in a lot of situations. Yes. I mean, car rides, whatnot, uh, yeah, the Fox Sports app has been great for us yeah. to keep up with our friends going on TV. Yeah, right. We're traveling all the time. Like, you know, it, there's a lot of times that we're not able to stay. And, and watch the TV shows or whatever it is. So um, you know, if we're, we need to travel, we need to catch a flight, we need to start driving wherever we need to go, uh, somebody can pull up on their phone and you know, we can watch the TV show un- unfold, right? I got, to, I got to watch, I was taking Packy to the airport in Philadelphia, got to watch both win his first title. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, shout out to that. Um, so make sure, that. Yeah, so make sure you go ahead and get that download. Um, yeah, you, gotta, easy, uh, yeah, you just got to sign into your uh, usual cable. Uh, cable login. or your internet, it'll work yeah, yeah. just fine. Gonna be, gonna be uh, good. So we have about five minutes left in this thing, guys. So uh, we'll touch up on these picks, make our quick predictions, and uh, we'll head on over to the telecast. You already said that you got New Jersey all thirty New to Jersey. twenty-nine. What? How does that thirty twenty-nine transpire? Is it strike strike nine, and then 
New Jersey throws one after? I hope it's strike, strike nine. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they close it out with a strike. Team goes nuts. Loud. I hope the third shot is by my boy, Portisha. That would be awesome. It yes. could be very well. I hope be. it would. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chris, who you got? Dallas, New Jersey? Give me Dallas. I, Dallas? I just, I just think they finally went. I mean, they're bowling too good. Uh, you know, I think everyone's sharp. They got some really, really good players. You had Jake make a run this week. I know you have Cortez on the other side who made a run this week. Uh, but yeah, I, I just see, um, I just see Dallas. You know, uh, they're just going to keep bowling well. It's like a law of averages thing, right? Yeah. It's just one of those things that it's it, gotta feel, it feels like that they got to happen. Like if so, if they keep bowling how they've been bowling, um, I got a hard time believing that that they're going to lose again. Uh, never know. I think I got to agree. As much as I want to root for New Jersey, and I, I'm hoping we're rooting for them a little bit. I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm sorry the journalist Kevin is just being honest. Um, I'm, I am going to root for them because that's going to help our team a little bit with LAX, but I, I think you're right. I think, I think Dallas is just going to win because it's bound to happen eventually. They're bowling good. I love their team on paper. I was like, that's one of the best teams because I knew the chemistry was there. Uh, they're just they're just getting beat. Like, as simple as that. Like you're just bowling well, you're just getting beat at the yeah. wrong times. It happens. I think but, it just breaks through here. But the other thing is, uh, the other team that um, on the show, this is their second show, is New Jersey. Right? So they also bowled in Indy uh, on that telecast, and they lost. Lost. They lost the Waco. Yeah, yeah they lost the Waco. Yeah. So they are zero and one on TV. So they bowled the two lower teams. I think Dallas just breaks through. I just think simple as that. They've been bowling well. It's just going to happen. It's like, finally, we got to win. I feel like we deserve yeah. more than this. Um, I don't want that for the LAX bowler in me. Yeah. But I, th- I think Dallas gets one. Um, and I, yeah, I love Cortez. I picked him several different times to be my breakout player of the year. Uh, I think this year maybe he finally is considered the breakout player of the year. Well, well it, yeah, never mind. Never mind. We got both. Yeah, we got Wilkins, you know, obviously going incredible as well. I think once Tez gets a full year under yeah. his belt as an exemplar, but now we'll see what he can do. He's coming in to a new team. This is his first time on a league team. It's not the first time, just in general, or not the first time being on TV as a league team. This is his first time ever being on a league team. Has never bowled a match with these guys. Yes, he bowled very well this week. Do um, they put him in? I think so. Yeah, I think so, and I think it's. He just, he just won the Legacy Cup thing. I he was going to touch Legacy on Cup that. Yeah, yeah, so that, that was a team. team environment with yeah. two great players. You got Hall of Famer Walt Ray, the greatest player of all time. And then you have future Hall of Famer Kyle Troop. And, but now, now you got a guy, now, now you're coming into a team where you win tonight, you're guaranteed into the playoffs. And uh, you're pretty much, I don't want to say eliminating the other team, but you're really putting a damper on the other team. I, he's nice, man. I, and I he's, really he's really good. I love I've him. been on the receiving end he's of, nice. of his, yeah, he's his striking him. way too yeah. many times. Yeah. I, yeah. He can I, play. I fully believe in Cortez, but I don't know. Just something feels like it just may not mesh immediately. It, it just it usually doesn't, right? You yeah. gotta get used yeah. to it. But it just may not mesh immediately. I think it'll be a good pick. I think up I think he's gonna be massive in Portland. I think yeah. he's going to be huge for them in Portland. By the time he gets there, they call Yeah, I think he's going to be huge for them in Portland. I just don't know. He had a fantastic run this week. You know, emotions are kind of high. You come down off that high after you finally lose. It's like, you know, your, your body's drained, right? Yeah. And guess what? You're waking up the very next day. Now you're out of yeah. on a team that you've never bowled in before. That's a good point. It's, he could, come, he's out young. He could, he's he could come out here and throw four shots, ten back. And it wouldn't surprise me. He's like me. 17 years it, old. He's fine. It wouldn't, su- it wouldn't surprise me either. But, um, yeah, we'll see. So, uh, reminder, guys, uh, the Fox Sports app is probably going to be the safest bet for yes. you guys to be able to watch this. Um, but, you know, hopefully just keep an eye out. I'm sure there will be some uh, social media posts from the PBA, whether on their Facebook page, um, Twitter, Instagram. Yep. Uh, they will keep you guys up to date on, on where you guys need to go to, to watch this show yep. tonight. Uh, you guys definitely want to tune in. Yeah, first it's going to be fun. First, first time home there's going to be a home team and their home environment. Uh, and they're bowling good. We'll be floating around the crowd, so you guys want to play Where's the House? Yeah. Keep an eye out on the show. We will be around. Yeah, we'll guys. Around. Uh, just bear with us. Again, there was a rain delay. Um, just stick around for 15 minutes or so, and then we'll be going live, hopefully. So uh, 
tune in. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to see it in a whole new. It's going to be loud. I, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry for some of the audio issues. We did the best we could with the dungeon that we're in. For the Plenty table. of seats still as well. Plenty of seats. Uh, if you're in L.A., in L.A., if you're <laughs> in Vegas, come up here and support your home team. If you're not, we'll see you guys on Fox. Other than that, we'll see you tomorrow for the pre-show show yeah. for the Masters telecast, yeah. which is also going to be a good one. We'll see you guys in the morning. Other than that, bye.